Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt. I'm here with the 2023 Honda Civic. This one specifically is a hatchback. And for 2021, this car got a complete refresh and it's now more mature and refined than it ever has been before. So it's still the pinnacle, the top, the best sedan slash hatchback that you can buy. Today we're hitting the highlights thanks to our friends at Rustero. We're gonna hit the best and the rest, starting with the rest. Number one, we're gonna start where we usually Thank you, Honda. Number one, we're gonna start where we usually do, and that's with some of the random, smaller, seemingly missing items that you get on this top sport touring trim. No matter how much money you spend on a Civic, you can't get lumbar adjustments, a memory seat, a heated steering wheel, ambient lighting, or rear air vents. Of course, some of these things Honda's wanting to push you up into the Accord if you wanna get, and if you want something like a panoramic roof, well, you're gonna to have to go to the Acura lineup and get into their sedans if you want that. Number two, we're gonna talk about the fact that there's no hybrid, at least as of yet. This is a little bit of an asterisk here in the sense that the Civic Hybrid does not exist. Although, it kinda did very recently, but it went by the name Honda Insight. However, there is now, for 2023, no more Insight and no Civic Hybrid. So if you do want max fuel economy, you have to go for the Accord. Or you can wait another year for 2024 when the Civic Hybrid hits here. The silver lining is the fact that the Civic here actually gets 29 uh, MPG city and 37 MPG highway, which is pretty dang good even without a hybrid. So I guess I'll take that. And third and finally, they're a little bit expensive. Now these Honda Civics, and we're talking about hatchback prices here, start at just under 25 grand. This top trim sport touring starts at just over $31,000 though, which is a problem because the Corolla starts at $21,700 and the XLE Hybrid starts at $26,850. That means the most expensive Corolla you can buy starts within a grand of the second cheapest Civic, and the Toyota is a hybrid. Again, caveat being that the Corolla isn't a hatch, this Civic hatch is much more comparable to something like a Mazda 3 hatch, which is pretty similar at starting MSRP, but you can spend around five grand more on the Mazda. But there's a lot of great things going on with the Civic, so let's talk about those. First and foremost, the hatch is awesome here. The cargo space is huge. You also get 60-40 folding rear seats for even more space and the most brilliant privacy cover ever devised. The hatch is definitely the way to go if you're looking into a Civic. Number two is transmission choice. In the Civic, you get a choice of one of two transmissions. You can get the CVT, which I have here, which feels a little bit faster and a little bit more fuel efficient, or you can get the six-speed manual transmission, which is gonna be a little bit more fun. And also, usually, you can only get manual transmissions on the base trims of cars. But here, in the Civic, you can get the manual on the top trim, what we have here, the Sport Touring. So that's pretty cool. And number three, we're gonna talk design. Now this 11th gen Civic is a much more restrained, subtle and mature design than it was previously. And I have to say, I'm a fan of it. You've got a honeycomb grille up front with a matching lower fascia. You've got sharp LED running lights. You've got LED fogs on your sport touring trim here. And your chassis is stronger and longer by about an inch and a half, at least in terms of wheelbase. You've got 18 inch wheels here, which are standard and very cool. And you can option a more I guess chunky five spoke design, but these are very similar to the SI. You've got a chrome window runner at the top, but not on the bottom, which is interesting. And your hatch gives you a sport back roof line. And you have kind of crab grab tail lights, but they don't go all the way across the back, even if they might look like it. And of course you've got badging on your rear tailgate and you have a dual exhaust with a bit of an asterisk because it really only kind of comes out one side. One more interesting thing about the exterior design is that the manual equipped cars only get three color paint options, whereas the CVT equipped cars have like eight to 10. And number four, we're gonna talk in, I forgot about you. And number four, we're gonna talk about interior details. Now, while it might be missing a couple of the smaller things we mentioned earlier, in terms of the design, the build and the materials, this is really toward the top of its segment. I'd say second really only to the Mazda 3, which is actively punching above its weight, but you are gonna pay for that in the Mazda. Here in the Civic, you have great leathers with contrasted stitching and piping. In the sport touring trim, you can get any color interior as long as it's black. You can get a sunroof here. You get a nice, easy to use physical climate control stack. I do love the full dash honeycomb vent detailing with the toggle knobs. The toggles are weirdly satisfying and it reminds me of an Audi A5. And you get nice tech features too, like a totally digital 10 inch cluster on the sport touring trim here, and a nine inch touchscreen infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, again, for the sport touring trim. You do get a wireless charger here on this trim. You've got a reverse camera with cross traffic alert and emergency braking, and you get a pretty nice Bose audio system, which is one of the first branded audio systems in a Civic. 
Again, in terms of interior, it's just below a Mazda 3, but definitely above things like a Corolla and an Elantra. Nice job, Honda. And then number five, we'll start to talk about the driving experience, the all important driving experience. Now, long story short, this and the Mazda 3 are the best driving cars in this segment. Noticeably better than Elantra, noticeably better than a Corolla. Your LX and Sport trims do get the base engines, the two liter naturally aspirated engine. But if you go up to the EX or the Sport Touring, you get the 1.5 turbo, which is the same engine out of the Civic Si. Of course, it's detuned a little bit. So here it makes 177 horse, or excuse me, 180 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. That power goes through an open differential, of course, in this application, the CVT, to just the front wheels. And you can get to zero to 60 in about seven-ish seconds. Does it feel like a sports car or a hot hatch? No, but it shouldn't really. The SI and the Type R are there if you still need more power, more performance, and of course, those LSDs. The steering is good though. The damping strikes a really nice balance between spunky and comfy, and it's just easy and fun to drive. A couple interesting things to note just generally about the manual cars though. The clutch is really light. That stays true throughout the Civic, the SI, and even a little bit in the Type R. The shift action is really satisfying, and there's actually no drive modes that you can get with the manual car, which I guess isn't a huge surprise. But again, overall, it's fun, it's easy, it's a nice little hatch that gets great fuel economy, and I just, I like driving it. It's a good car. And then lastly, rear seats. This is the smallest car that Honda makes, and even still myself at 6.1, I'm pretty good. These rear seats are bigger than they were last generation, and with the sloped hatch roofline, it does eat into headroom a little bit, but even with my hat on, I'm fine. The materials in the back here aren't quite as nice as the front, and you can tell on the, the door card. And you do get only one pocket and you don't have air vents in the back here, but you do get dual USBs, cup holders, and a comfy enough seat back here. I guess my only complaint is that it doesn't have air vents back here, but other than that, I'm really impressed with the back seat here. So that's the best and the rest of the 2023 Honda Civic hatchback. It's a great experience from the driving to the interior and cabin appointments and the cavernous and practical hatchback. At over $31,000, this Sport Touring top trim starts to seem like a lot of money though, but for 2024, once this thing has a hybrid, I think it's gonna be even more compelling than it already is. So thanks again to my friends at Rust Aero Honda for letting me have a go, and we'll see you in the next one.